Hey everybody, I'm artist Micah Gogan, and if you've been following the Golden Social Media accounts, you probably took advantage of the recent giveaway for the sample box that features all the golden goodies that represent the different lines that they carry. But many of you might have gotten the box and then said, hey, I love it, I'm excited. Now what the what do I do with everything? So I've taken the opportunity to just record this short video, just showing you a little introduction about what each product is and how you can combine them and different things that you can do to create some awesome fun samples while you're exploring the products and creating some playtime for yourself. So enjoy and if you haven't gotten the golden goodie box yet, stay on track and watch the social media accounts for more giveaways. So a lot of questions come from the golden goodie box and uh, you have all these fabulous supplies and now it's like what do I do with them? So when you open the golden uh, sample kit, you'll see a guide that tells you exactly the difference between all the different colors and paste that are available here. And we'll just go through it briefly. We have the fluid acrylic in the benzamidazolone yellow. We have the high flow in the quinacridone magenta. We have the open in the um, titan green pale. We have the heavy body in the phthalo blue green shade. We have some regular gel gloss, and we have some light molding paste. Then there's also a 100% employee-owned Golden Company sticker. It's one of the only companies that is 100% owned by the employees. And then we have a fabulous color guide that lets you know all the colors that are available in each of the different viscosities. So for example, the heavy body, which is the phthalo blue that you received, has all of these color choices available in the heavy body. Then you have your open slow drying. So there's less colors available, but uh, there's still a wide variety. Then you have your um, so flat matte acrylics, which didn't come in this kit, but just telling you a little bit about them. Your fluid, which was the benzamidazolone yellow light, and you have all of these colors available as well. And then there's the high flow, um, which has all of the colors, and that was your quinacridone magenta. So a little bit about um, information on top of grounds, you know, different materials react differently with them. You also have a little bit on your gels and paste, which is, you know, pretty comprehensive. And then you have mediums and additives and acrylic polymers. All of this information can be found on the Golden website, um, but also you can follow their social media accounts where they break them up into bite-sized pieces. So everything that you wanted to know about that. So let's talk about first the viscosity level between the different paint samples that you got. So what do we mean when we talk about viscosity? Well, it's how thick or thin the paint is. And so these are some larger um, varieties of the same samples that you got. And so this again is the high flow, which is like a watercolor. Um, it's very fluid, um, similar to acrylic inks or watercolor. Uh, the pigment loads are exactly the same, no matter how fluid or thick the mediums are. Uh, Golden uses as much pigment as the binders will possibly hold, so you'll find a really high pigment load in each of the colors. That's why when you go to buy a color, um, they're at different price points. So for example, if I was buying high flow, the red might be more expensive than the yellow, and that's because the quality of the natural pigment that's inside it. So let's talk about the different viscosities. So with the high flow, um, you can do this for a variety of techniques, and I'll be glad to show you what they're for. But this is going to be your high flow. Then you have your fluid. Then you have your heavy body. And then you have your open. I'm just going to use a little bit of a palette knife for this. Okay, so within your four viscosities here, I can just tip the palette up and you can see, you know, the difference between. So, of course, my um, high flow is going to run the most. 
And then you can see the beginning of the benzimidazolone starting to drip down where these two stay in place. The open does seem to be a little bit creamier than the heavy body, but they're very similar in consistencies. So what the heck is the difference and how do I use these things? Well, if you're taking a standard scrap, so this is just an abstracted sample board that's here. And if you're going to use something like the heavy body, um, which is the Thalo Blue, I'm just gonna moisten my brush here. The heavy body is great for what we call blocking in, meaning that whenever you go to first fill in a painting when the canvas is totally white, it gets really great coverage because of the thicker viscosity. Now it can be thinned down, but overall the nature is for coverage. And you can get really heavy uh, brush strokes that are available as well. So that way you can put a little bit more into the painting, um, but it's just got a very uh, heavy, creamy texture. Now the fluid um, is a little bit more for, I prefer it for glazing and for mixing with other mediums, just because it's a little bit more smoother. Um, I like using the fluids after I have blocked in a painting, meaning that I usually use heavy body to get the substantial amount of paint down on the board. Then once I've achieved that, I'll go back in with the fluids. Although, you know, you're welcome to use them any way that you like. The viscosity tends to be a little thin, so when I put them down as a base coat, it's too transparent to give me the coverage that I'm looking for, and I'll show you that in a moment. But they're really great for uh, glazing and building on layers. And then I can blend these colors together. And the marriage between the viscosities gives you something in between that's a little bit nicer. Then for the high flow, you can use these as watercolors, or you can also glaze just having a little bit more freedom, um, but they're really great on water media, um, papers and boards, because you can really get the disbursement by activating with a little bit of water. I'm just gonna take a wet brush and you can see how the high pigment load just kind of flows with this color. And this is an absorbent panel that I'm working on, a piece of aqua board. So it's just soaking up that color and you can see as it mixes with the other paint because all of these different lines are interchangeable. So you can use them all together for different effects depending on what you're trying to achieve. And then we have the open which can still be used in the same fashion as the heavy body but the open stays activated because of its slow drying agents. You can get usually about a good, depending on the humidity and, and temperature in your environment, but a good two to three hours working with the open because of the slow drying agents that are in it. So a lot of um, techniques that were only available originally with oil are now possible in acrylic because of the slow drying properties of the open. Um, so that means that probably in about 15 or 20 minutes, all of this is going to be dry, but anything mixed with this Titan Pale Buff, because it's an open, is still gonna be workable. It's gonna be open and you're gonna be able to uh, remove, you can do subtractive techniques, you can get a la prima effects with wet on wet. So there's a lot of variety to include with the open. So just giving you an example here of how they all blend together and just kind of get something happy, nice, get a little feeling and energy on that. Okay. Another cool thing is that you can do scraffito in the open a little bit longer because you can actually, you know, scratch into the paint because of its wet nature after you have worked it. You can still do it with the regular paint as well just to get more effects. Um, that you have more time with the open to just create a little bit more energy. Okay, so I'm gonna set that aside. Now another really fun thing to do with the open is that you can use it on your gel plates if you enjoy printmaking techniques. It's really fabulous for that because traditional paints will dry on the surface of the gel plate a little bit quicker and make the cleanup a kind of a headache. So if you're using the open, you have more workability time because again, you've got the 
uh, long time frame and duration where you can actually work the paint. So I'm just going to smear some of this open on here. Now, does it have to be open? No, you can always buy the additives. They sell the open medium that you can add to your regular acrylics and make them a little bit more open. But of course, this is nice because it's already proportionately mixed. So I've got a nice coat there. Now I can even take dabs of this other paint and put it on here for added color. But because the majority of the proportion on the plate is the open, I'll still get those nice slow drying effects. I'll just take some of each. Okay. And then I can take a wet brush. I like the short bristles. This is a black pearl bright. So it actually with the shorter bristles will remove paint a little bit more. And I can just subtract into that paint and just wipe it on a paper towel, just like I'm mopping a dirty floor and just take off any material that I don't care for. And again, because this could be a little bit more of an involved process, you can actually, you know, take your time and not have this material dry on the gel plate. Okay, I'm actually going to even take my paper towel and wipe some areas completely clean. And then you can use any panel. I'm just going to use a standard sheet of paper here and just print. And you see you have a really great effect there. You've got negative spacing where you're pulling off. And because it's still activated on the plate to clean it, I can just press another print down, making sure that I get Nice coverage all the way across. And I can pull what's called a ghost print, which is a little bit lighter, and just have tons of fun effects with that. Now, if you're printing on panel, you can actually go back in with more paint and embellish on top. But that's a fun way to play with the open acrylics. Now, some other things that came in your kit are the um, regular gel gloss and you can use this as a medium for your paint so it comes in several sizes there's the 16 ounce there's an 8 ounce and then there is everything up to a gallon this is 32 ounces so I'm just going to use a little bit of the regular gel gloss and take my palette knife here And you can see it looks like it's uh, like a white paint, but actually it is more of a transparent. So I'm just going to put a little nick by each of these and show you what it can do when mixed. So. Okay. Now, remember the pigment loads are the same no matter what the viscosity of the paint. So even when I take the heavy body, I can just take a little bit of paint. Notice how I've just got a little on the tip and I can mix it in with my gel gloss and you can see how powerful that color still is. And you can get all these great impasto effects with peaks and ridges and just play with your, your texture as you build up with the gel. Um, same thing with the fluid. It just takes a little mixing it in. And you see you still get a nice vibrant color. A little goes a long way. So the gel medium can actually help you not only extend the dry time uh, by a small degree, but also extend the paint life. Take a little bit of my high flow, and you just see these wonderful colors that you have. And you can do some color mixing, so I can make a nice purple out of the magenta and the phthalo. Got a really beautiful violet there. I can also mix up a really nice orange and I can mix up a nice green so 
So really beautiful color mixing there that you can also add uh, to any painting and just give it a little bit more depth. So we'll revisit the uh, panel here and just take a look at how we can embellish with just a little bit more. So I'm going to take my uh, soft gel gloss and I'm just going to work a little bit more with this green color here, pulling a little bit of my paint, pulling some of that blue down, maybe even a little hint of that purple just to neutralize it. And I'll just take my palette knife and in this flatter section that doesn't really have as much going on, I'll just put a little bit of texture with my palette knife and you can see all that deliciousness there. So it gives you all kinds of globs and ridges. You can also scrape back down and reapply so that you can get, you know, all kinds of effects. You can do your Scraffito back in this just like we did with the open. So don't be scared to play with it, you know, just really allow yourself to have some playtime because that's really what it's all about, right? So another great thing with the uh, regular gel gloss is that you can use it for collage. So I'll take another experimental panel and we'll just use this one here. Then you can take any standard collage paper. So I just have a couple of examples here. And we're going to use it as a traditional adhesive. So it's less tacky and sticky than some of the familiar adhesives that you may be aware of. And what I can do is just take pieces or bits of the paper and I'm going to make sure that my brush is clean. And I'm just going to go with the straight gel with no paint added, although you certainly could add some paint. And I'm going to place a coat of the gel where I want my paper to go and just put a generous amount down. I want to be able to not see any um, large globs. So for example, that would be too excessive and it would create bubbling underneath. So I'm just going to make sure that I have a thin coat where I don't see any of the white or opaque coloration. Then just for extra, I'm going to put a little bit on the back of the paper as well so that it's um, wet on wet. And then I'm just going to apply my paper down and I'm going to put a third coat on top. Now, depending on the delicacy of the paper, you can allow this top coat to dry and then place another coat on top. But you can repeat this process to get all kinds of collage effect. And again, if you would like to add color just to stain it, you're welcome to do that as well. So let's try that. I will take a little bit of my phthalo. Let me get my gel first. And I'm going to place that on the panel. And then just grab just a little bit of this phthalo to go with it. So now not only is it adhesive, but it's also a deeper blue. And then you can see when I put it on the back of the paper that it's definitely got a stain to it. Phthalo is a high staining color. And then when I collage my paper down, you see that it also gives it a nice glaze. And if you're looking to unify your painting, maybe you don't want the light value, then you can always just add a little bit of a color to quiet or soften that down. So really nice uh, collage techniques here. Another cool thing that we can do with it is we can take a stencil and we can actually add a stenciled or textured design to it as well. So again, I'm going to revisit my palette knife here and take a little bit of the regular gel gloss and I'm just going to mix up a little bit of a little hint of magenta. Now when mixing gels or paste, um, it's important to know that if you mix over 50% paint with the gel, it no longer has the properties of the paint, but more of the properties of the gel and vice versa. So if you really want the gloss to come out, um, you want to keep your mixture under 50% so that you have the properties of the gel and not the paint. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay this uh, stencil down on top and I've got my mixture here and I'm just going to work away from myself, spreading out the texture on the stencil. And when I lift up, I've just got added uh, texture and ridges. And when that dries, I'll be able to run my fingers over it. I'll even be able to stain it again and 
catching the grooves it's just really nice and it's going to have that gloss texture because it comes in a variety of finishes when you see the names on the golden products regular defines the consistency or viscosity of the gel so just like we've talked about viscosities here with the paint the gels also come in thicknesses they're soft which is a little bit more creamy like yogurt um, there's the regular there's the heavy and there's the extra heavy so you know yogurt honey toothpaste those kind of textures will describe the regular heavy soft then you have gloss matte semi-gloss etc which controls the outcome all right so i'm going to set that little bad boy aside now we're going to talk about the light molding paste that also came in your kit now the light molding paste the difference between a paste and a gel is that gels are consistently clear or transparent paste are generally opaque so whenever we go to use the light molding paste you can see that it's got a lighter and more fluffy consistency. It's almost like the marshmallow cream that you may or may not be familiar with as a kid. And when you go to get it on your palette knife, you'll see how much more substantial it is. It just really creates a lot of texture and peaks. Um, I'm going to spread some here on the remaining color so that you can see a lot thicker now the cool thing about light molding paste is that it is 50% lighter than any of the other gels in paste, meaning that you can really apply a lot to a painting and still not have it be heavy. A lot of times when we add a lot of mediums, the paintings tend to get really heavy and cumbersome, um, but this keeps it nice and light and fluffy. And you can still repeat the same types of experiences where you can create ridges and texture, um, or you can actually use the stencil. So I'll show you the difference here, is that you can go over it with different peaks, scraping it back off. And you know, don't be scared, this was just a little sample, but you can definitely just cake it on. I love the exposed complementary color that's coming throughout, that's really nice. And you can just really pile it on, scratch in, scraffito, scrape off, whatever the case may be, right? Then we'll continue to do the same thing with the stencil. I'm just going to clean my palette knife off here and grab a little bit more of the light molding paste. And this time I'll pull some of the blue and green, or blue and yellow, and make a green. Just to have a nice oppositional color and I like not over mixing because then I get all those beautiful undulations in the color and then the same thing and I have again just really awesome texture now the light molding paste is actually uh, it consists of styrofoam spheres so they actually that's what makes it so light uh, but they're also slightly absorbent so whereas the gel would not continue to absorb paint when the light molding paste is dry it still is slightly absorbent almost like a watercolor ground so you could continue to stain with the high flows or even some of the fluids um, and be able to change and augment that color once it's dry and i'll show you an example of that So here are two examples. These are some of the light molding paste that are stenciled with a tree stencil. This one has been tinted just like these were so that you have a little bit of color to it. And it's a green on top of a magenta. But then here I've put color bands of different colors. The teal, which is more opaque. The phthalo, which is more transparent. A little bit of metallic gold. And even a fluorescent orange. Just to show you the difference in the opacity levels. You see how when it's got no um, paint to tint it, it's actually more like a white and just goes down um, straight. And you can actually take a little bit of the high flow, or any of them actually, but the high flow's got the highest viscosity, so I'll use a little bit of that. And then what I can do is just glaze 
and you see how absorbent it just flows right in. Now I can still do the same thing with fluid and get a little bit more color variation and still the same with a little bit of thalo. So the water still helps activate it and really just sucks that color in. So you get all these beautiful watercolor effects with the light molding paste. Now I can also do it on a colored ground. So with this one, I have the green, but let's just say that I want to tint or stain. I can just add a little bit of the paint and stain both the background and the existing dry light molding paste. So you can really augment your colors there. And then if I really wanted to level up, I could even take some of the wet light molding paste mixture. I'm just gonna borrow from this little piece. And I can just apply as an additional texture to the bottom just to create more. And then if I wanna go back and stain this again with color once it dries, then I certainly can do that as well. So the sky's the limit with what you can do with the paste or gels, just as long as you can keep in mind Generally, when a gel is transparent or clear and a paste is more opaque. So I hope that you enjoy playing with your golden goodies. I can't wait to see what you all come up with. If you have any questions, you're welcome to email Golden Paints. Um, you can also reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, and also follow the social media accounts so that you can learn in bite-sized pieces a little bit more about all the variety of gels and mediums and keep entering those contests for a chance to get some free golden goodies.